Well, we all knew this was coming. There was no way all the EV startups could stay afloat. And unfortunately, this is not a video I was looking forward to making, but it's one that I feel like we have to acknowledge. Lordstown Motors, the creator of the Endurance electric pickup truck in the slogan, work for it, did not endure. And unfortunately, they did not work for it. They have filed for bankruptcy and they are in the process of suing one of their biggest partners, Foxconn, despite the fact that not too long ago, I recall everybody being on board with this idea. They were like, okay, they're reusing an existing factory line. There's already a factory in place. They've got an okay looking truck. They've got these in-wheel hub motors that should help with efficiency in some way. And there's demand for electric trucks, right? And this one isn't crazy expensive. You know, it was originally gonna be around 50 grand. It ended up costing over 60,000, but still, compared to F-150 Lightning and Rivian prices, not a horribly expensive truck. They were primarily targeting fleet buyers, which is where most of the electrification cost savings show up. So by all means, the idea seemed sound, but what went wrong here, I guess is what I'm trying to look into. And while it's easy to blame it on demand, I think that's what a lot of people do in the startup company space is whenever a company goes down, people just go, oh, well, the product sucked, so people didn't want to buy it. But no, that's clearly not the issue here with Lord's town because they really only built 40 or 50 pickup trucks and they clearly had several thousand fleet orders at least and technically they were able to deliver a few dozen pickup trucks so they entered production and they started deliveries which in the startup world a lot of the time people just act like that's supposed to solve all your problems that startup company isn't real because they haven't delivered a product and once you deliver a product okay now you're a real company now you're an official brand we can take seriously but here we are they did start production they did start deliveries and that wasn't enough so I think there's a lot to be learned from Lordstown as an example that they probably put way too much resources into, okay, we need to get this vehicle into production and we've already agreed upon the design. Maybe fundamentally it was much harder to produce than they thought. And that's why getting all of the supply chains in place and the expense of trying to get a factory online, very, very expensive, which is why Tesla has coined the term production hell. And even though they technically got to that point of deliveries, the expense of bringing that vehicle into production production was enough to actually kill the brand. I think a lot of it honestly may come down to the complexities of the overall product, despite the fact that they were trying to reuse a lot of an existing factory line. It was not a brand new factory. It was an old GM plant. And they were like, okay, we can kind of retrofit this old factory for our new purpose of making an all electric truck. But as it turns out, a lot of the time retrofitting an old assembly line or an old process that was optimized for a combustion engine vehicle into an entirely new platform form ends up being more expensive than if you would have just started from scratch initially. And while yes, there's a ton of demand for electric pickup trucks, I think the bigger issue with starting with a pickup truck is they tend to require much, much bigger battery packs. So every single endurance pickup truck needed a 100 plus kilowatt hour pack, which is not cheap. Even if you want to sell it at $62,000, I think you're probably still selling it at a loss. And the interior shots we saw of the endurance was painting a picture of a lot of excess, not so much simple minimalism that we may see in a Tesla or an Aptera vehicle. They were going for screens, buttons, and dials everywhere, and that adds to the complexity. It's not like I'm just trying to say the dashboard is what kills the company, but I do think the dashboard is a reflection of how the rest of the company is maintained. And if they have that much complexity there, where else is there that much complexity? So many other employees that probably don't need to be there or too much work and time going towards the parts and processes that shouldn't exist in the first place. And even though they partnered with Foxconn, one of the big biggest, most well-known manufacturers in the world, Foxconn wasn't able to see this right away. And once they started realizing, oh crap, the overhead here is way out of control and no, the profitability here is not feasible. They decided they wanted to pull out of this partnership. They realized this is not going to be worth it. So the second that Lordstown was threatened to be delisted by the stock exchange, Foxconn quickly picked up on that and was like, oh, that's technically outside of our deal. We only wanted to do business with you if you were a publicly traded company, which is once again, one of the issues I take when a company goes public. It creates all of this red tape and it creates all of these partnerships and regulations like the one that we're seeing now with Foxconn and Lordstown being mad at each other. Aptera doesn't have to worry about this because they're not publicly traded yet, but now Lordstown is upset about that. So they're probably wasting company money and time on suing Foxconn for breaking their contract. And who knows how long this lawsuit is going to take place to play out. It could easily be years. And by the time there's actually a settlement, the company could be totally 
literally bust. It is already bankrupt, and they're putting themselves up for sale, hoping that someone else will buy them out. But honestly, given the bad condition of the company, with the financials being really poor, and the product in the first place not being that great, which, again, I don't think it was a demand issue that killed the company, but just the fact that they designed a vehicle with a 100 plus kilowatt hour battery pack with a range under 200 miles, which is pretty abysmal for a vehicle of this price and with a battery pack that large. While they may not have run out of demand yet because production was so soon, it probably doesn't prove to very many potential investors or other companies that are looking to buy up an EV startup. Yeah, those other brands aren't going to look at the endurance pickup truck and go, wow, yeah, that's, uh, that's really tempting. We want to make sure we buy your intellectual property because the IP, I don't think, is inherently that unique or that valuable. If anything, it's valuable in the extent of here's how not to build a pickup truck because the efficiency sucks. It's probably hard to build and hard to manufacture, which is why they're in the pickle they're in right now. But of course, you don't need to buy a pickup truck brand to figure out this is not how you're supposed to build one. Monroe and Associates will probably tear one down eventually. They've already been talking with the Lordstown guys a bit, and I think in time they'll likely show us, yeah, here's all the mistakes they made along the way. So I'm never going to be happy to be reporting on a company going bankrupt or someone going under because there are real people involved with this and they're going to lose their jobs and hopefully find decent work elsewhere. But it is, I think, one of many, unfortunately, that are to come. Making car companies is incredibly difficult and most of car companies go bankrupt and doing an all electric company startup is like even more complicated, even more difficult to turn profitable. If you don't have massive investment supporting you during those first few years where you're not profitable, then you're just not going to make it, which is unfortunately the lesson that Lordstown has learned. And I think the reason that Aptera is being very careful with how they enter production, and it's why they're so focused on investment right now. They're waiting for the ATVM loan, as well as still working with big investors, small investors, to make sure that they can keep the company afloat and make it run as lean as possible until they are ready to start production. And once they do, scale as quickly as possible so that you can generate a ton of revenue very, very fast instead of do what Lordstown did and just start with very, very light, small production, which ends up actually killing the company. So what did you guys think of the endurance? Was there some cool aspects of it that I wasn't seeing? Personally, I found the truck design a little bit uninspired and kind of boring, but clearly the brand had much bigger issues than that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. Thanks again, and have an excellent rest of your day.